I'm John Lee with the St. Louis Real Estate Investors Association. Welcome. Today is Friday, the, uh, what is it? August 4th, 2023. Glad to see all your smiling faces here. Got a little bit of uh, new news. We, um, let's see, we have Miss Catherine uh, Davis, our, our, I admired attorney here and <laughs> was talking we uh about some some landlord things we haven't seen her since our landlord tenant educational program uh week before last which was very educational and in the future do watch your uh emails because if this when the next one available I don't know what it is but do make sure you show up if you're a landlord if you're a tenant or if you know any landlords or tenants very eye opening and very informative so um welcome Kathy do you have anything to say to us today well, I, I've got a couple of things. Um, you may know that the tenants' right to counsel bill passed in the city. Um, it's a little bit early yet before we're going to know exactly how they're going to roll that out. Although the bill says that they're going to hire a coordinator in city hall and that coordinator is going to dish the work out to the tenant lawyers. Um, we've heard a couple of things around the courthouse, which, as you can imagine, is a total hive of gossip about which um, tenant organizations are going to uh, try to bid to get the work. I think that it's probably going to be legal services or Arch City or um, New Covenant or some combination because they already have the systems in place to do the not-for-profit pro bono representation of tenants. Um, they're going to spend $5 million over four years starting next year. And I recently heard that they're not going to start until July 1st of next year. Um, $5 million does not buy a lot of attorney time over four years for the number of tenants that we have in the city. Um, and I think I've expressed this to you before, but I can tell you pers personally as a city resident, I would rather see them get a functioning 911 system and a reliable water supply than spend $5 million representing tenants. Um, the tenants already have a lot of options to go to for free legal help. Um, and this bill does not means test them, which means it doesn't matter. It, it's not just for poor people. It's for anyone, um, according to the bill, that can get this help for free. So the person who's living in the $4,000 penthouse in the 100 North Kings Highway does not need my tax dollars to pay for their lawyer, I do not think. Um, so like with most things that the city does, it's likely to be a shaky rollout and have some issues. However, there are some important things in the bill that you're going to need to know about. We'll talk again closer to the time, but there are going to be um, there's going to be a, 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 an additional burden of notice requirements that landlords are going to have to serve on tenants when they're terminating them and that kind of thing. And once the city develops the form, we will get you a copy of that. We'll send it to John Lee. He'll post it on your on your internet site and. Um, we'll be around to ask answer any questions that you have with respect to that. Um, I appreciate John and Laura and anybody else who came from this group to the panel that we did in the city um, a couple of weeks ago. It might have just been last week, although it seems longer. But uh, we had myself and Susan Alverson from Legal Services and Judge Heather Hayes, who is one of the associate civil judges in the city. And the panel was moderated by um, Judge Stovall Reed. It was a great turnout, and um, I really appreciated everybody laughing at my jokes. Uh, <laughs> so, so I was good. My husband told me I was the best one. Of course, he's objective, um, very much. Yeah, and he likes to come home at night, you know, and come inside. So he has to say that to me. Um, I don't think I have anything else that's really big right now. We're we're continuing to participate in the coalition, the housing coalition that was started by Charlie Hinderreiter of the Realtors and the St. Louis Apartment Association is participating in it and many other groups. And I think you guys have sent representatives to join in that coalition. Um, I would encourage those landlords in St. Louis County, particularly North County, to um, join uh, Officer Bakula and his um, Society for Ethical Landlords, which he concentrates on North County and they have meetings every other month with good speakers. They had me once, they had section eight people coming and answering questions about that. They have a lot of helpful information. It's a good networking opportunity. It's usually a lunch um, and it's every other month. And then when I get notice of the next one, I'll email it to John so that he can let you all know. 
So I think there's starting to be um, uh, more landlord get togethers and more interest in making it just not always about the poor tenants, but representing the landlord side in some of these debates about legislation. The city is thinking about going on in addition to the right to counsel bill, they are um, debating a tenants bill of rights, which has some really crazy stuff in it that we've sort of heard, um, you know, right to repair and, and all this kind of thing. And we're trying to get in there and saying, look, here's the problems with this. With right to repair, for example, um, do, you, do you want any repairmen coming in and repairing your property? What if the tenant doesn't pay them? What if they put a mechanics lien on the property? What if they don't pull permits and the city cites you? I mean, there's it's more complicated than just, well, the landlord didn't come to unclog my toilet. You know, it's it's there's a lot of other considerations. Um, there are some landlords that don't do a good job maintaining their property and cause nuisances in the neighborhood and that kind of thing. But the city and most of our municipalities already have mechanisms to, to work on that. So I don't think they need to go after landlords more or pass some of these things that are really not well thought out. And if they think there's a housing crisis now, just wait until they drive all the landlords out of the market. Um, then there will really be a housing crisis. So I am going to Europe in two weeks. <laughs> and... I'll be gone for three weeks. And then the week after that, I'm going to the Missouri Bar Convention in Kansas City to try to do a little early lobbying on some of these issues with um, judges and my fellow attorneys. So I'll be out for a while. So I wanted to pop in today and see you guys and um, give you my little update. Anybody have anything or need anything? Hey, Kathy, from, from my view, I yeah. thought you did real well on that board you were on with the uh, attorney and the judge and the, uh, down in the city. I thought that was really good. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if I'm it wasn't grateful. for you, it would have been a boring time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Susan Alverson does tend to go on, doesn't she? <laughs> yeah. She's not lighthearted at all. <laughs> Let me see. I think we have something in the chat. Um, Wait, why can't I see it? Okay, I got it. When the sheriff is requested for removal, how long does it take for them to show up? Mm. Chris just left. He went down to um, Alabama to pick up my grandson, um, who's been down there visiting his other grandparents. Um, so I would ask him, because I know in the city it's been variant recently with, um, they've been behind. But then I talked to Lieutenant Hogan and he put a second squad on it. So now I think it's more like we get the judgment, there's a stay after the judgment, which might be 10 days, might be a little longer. When that stay is up and we can file the execution in the city, they process it really quickly. You know, we get the issued execution from the clerk back, usually within a business day. Then we have to carry it down to the sheriff because it's 1920 I mean it's 2023 and they're still like Pony Express they won't take a fax or an email of the issued execution or anything we have to carry it down there in person so um and we but we go down practically every day so that happens pretty quick then you have to call the sheriff the eviction deputy and schedule it I think they're scheduling at that point about two weeks out right now it was more like a month behind or even longer for a while until they added another crew and that kind of thing um in other jurisdictions, your mileage may vary. St. Charles is super fast. Um, St. Louis County, I think, is pretty quick, too. For a few weeks there, after they rolled out the new case net July 1st, we were having trouble getting the executions processed by the clerk. That wasn't on the sheriff. That was on the clerks. And they were having issues adapting to the new case net system. Um, but I think that's back to quasi-normal now. Um, and by the way, the new case net system, I've told you guys this before, but I'll say it again. Everything filed after July 1st, you can see everything. So you can click on all those links and find out about your neighbor's divorce and you know your daughter's boyfriend's criminal record and <laughs> that kind of thing is all, all there for you to see. Um, there is an increased move to allow tenants to raise security levels on their past evictions. So you need to make sure that you do more screening than just checking case net. That's a good initial thing to check, but go beyond that. 
call prior landlords, have a professional screening service, run credit bureaus, you know, do other things to, to verify that they haven't gotten evicted before. Um, and then the other th request that we have is we have a redaction request requirements now when we file stuff because anybody can see it. So if you can avoid putting social security numbers on leases, that would help us because otherwise we have to make sure we redact them. And also names and ages of minor children. If you need to put on your lease, Jane Smith and her three minor children, that's fine. But try to avoid putting Susie age 10, Johnny age seven, Sammy age six, because we're not allowed to put that information, that kind of information about minors on CaseNet now. Okay, that's all I got. New CaseNet system, what's new about it? Okay, well, you just heard, <laughs> that's what's new about it. And, you know, slower load times and um, difficulty accessing it for a while, although that seems to be cleared up. Okay, guys, have a great rest of the summer. Will all the information that was out there on CaseNet still be avail available? Yes. And then, like I said, starting July 1st, things you'll, you'll, there's more now, more than okay. um, you used to be able to see. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Unless they've unless they've filed to raise the security level, which varies by judge, but a lot of those security levels are getting raised, which means you might not be able to see prior evictions and that kind of thing. So it's important to not just rely on CaseNet for your screening. Okay, I'll be back sometime in September. I'm not 100% sure exactly when. It might be like the end of September. I'll email you, John, and let you know what I'm doing. Thank you, Kathy. We appreciate you so much. You have the best trip ever, and don't think about anything to do with uh, St. Louis <laughs> and landlords. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> See you later, guys. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. Interesting times here. And um, I guess we'll find out more about that as Kathy um, updates us. And hopefully she'll get some great relaxation and rest like she I know she's well deserved. So anybody have anything they'd like to start with today? <clears throat> oh, I, I know Laura does with her. <laughs> Excuse me. We're we're in two different Hi, rooms here. I'm outside in the heat in the on the deck and she's inside <laughs> in the ice cold air. So she's probably thinking more clearly. Well, so. I'm probably going to lock the door on you. Yeah. She almost uh -oh. got me. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Please go. Good morning and welcome, everyone. First, I'd like to do a bit of housekeeping. Feel free to unmute yourself when it's your turn to speak. Please be mindful of everyone else by muting yourself while others are speaking. You're welcome to put any contact information that you want to share into the chat. We meet here to share deals, look for deals and solutions we have and need with our real estate. We are not your financial advisors, attorney, or accountants. We do not endorse or recommend any specific solutions or contractors here. You're advised to do your own due diligence to your own satisfaction before you invest. The first Friday of each month is Ask the Attorney with Ms. Katherine Davis. Our meetings are typically recorded, so only share what you want others to know. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, and thank you, Dwayne, for bringing that up about Kathy. I know we, you were there uh, at the event, The uh, I think it was a week before last. Very informative. Uh, do you have any other thoughts you'd like to say before we get started, Dwayne, or anybody else that was there? I mean, it was very uh, eye-opening. What did you think about the tenants uh, that got up there, Dwayne? I know I had a little different view than I did before. I don't know if she was a tenant or, or a landlord that was, had a big bitch, but she just went on and on. But I thought the moderator did a good job at saying, we're not here to discuss all of those details. So that was good. But I thought it was, I thought it was very good. The, my GPS took me to the wrong place and I wasn't impressed <laughs> with it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know we were talking about that yesterday, kind of driving out here in mid-Missouri that, uh, Maybe the paper maps are a little little better from what I remember on getting you to where you actually want to go because the GPS is they kind of take you. And I somebody told me this, I, I don't know, a while back, and I think it holds to be true. They're about 90% correct and about 10% just way off base. And that seems to be about right. Oh, yeah, it was 600 feet ago. You should have turned. <laughs> yeah, I was six blocks off and it was a long walk. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah, that's a long way. I did know where the library was, the central library, but I had never been in the auditorium, which I thought was very, uh, very nice. I, I don't know if it was recently redone or what, but uh, 
I know I'd never done that. We were just kind of thinking that's a good central location. Maybe we ought to look at having some events there in the future if they're not too expensive. Because that was very nice. Yeah, and I agree with you on the moderator too. And maybe because she was a judge, she can look at things more more uh, objectively than uh, I would be. Because I kind of agreed with you that I think you were talking about that last gal that came on there, and she was just going to keep pushing her point even though she said, no, we ended seven. And I really liked the way she said, we'll continue this out in the hallway. So she did a very good job keeping us on time. So very good. So anybody else that was there would like to have any thoughts or any comments on her? No, if not, does anybody have anything they'd like to buy or sell today? I guess we could get right onto there since I, uh, I remembered Laura's disclaimer <laughs> with my my friendly reminder, which I so often need. So, anybody have anything they'd like to uh, share with us today? A Happy lot of nice smiling Laura. faces. Good. A day late again. What was that, Bruce? Did you have? Yeah, I'm on my cell phone because my internet is out, but I was wishing Laura, I oh. hope she had a birthday yesterday. Oh, I did. Yeah. It was fun. <laughs> Thanks. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Anybody got anything to sell today? I guess we can start off just asking that. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm Peyton Gillis. I'm a CPA and uh, run a tax planning firm. Carrie Curley invited me over. So um, but we run a tax planning firm. It's called Tax Game Plan. We're based out here in O'Fallon. Um, and we specialize in working with doing tax planning, tax strategies. We also take care of your tax return compliance, we're book bookkeeping and all that. But what we're really offering is the strategies on, on a high level. Um, we mainly are focused on business owners, real estate investors, and professionals. Um, so we work with them closely. But really, um, what I wanted to talk to you guys about today or kind of bring up, um, anyone feel free to reach out, but I'll share this in the chat. On September 7th, um, it's a full day. We're doing a um, real estate tax workshop. Um, this is going to be, we'll start out. So for basic to seasoned real estate investors or professionals, if you're a business owner, real estate, realtor, wholesaler, if you're doing anything in real estate at all, we will start off from entity structuring and just the simplest of that, um, what might seem simplistic to some, but not others, how to deduct everything e easily, how to make sure you're set up well there. And then um, and then we'll get into more advanced topics, 1031s, cost segregation studies, Delaware State Trust. So it will get pretty advanced um, from there, but we'll, it's a full day event. We're hosting it at the Waterbury Center in O'Fallon off of Highway K. Um, if you're familiar with Faster House, it's their facility. We do have a live, a virtual attendance option as well. So I will put the uh, the link to the event in the, the chat box here. Also, currently, I'll put a promo code in there called tax free. So it's a 10% promo code if anyone wants to sign up there. Um, but you guys can sign up offices if it's a realtor's office and someone wants to sign up to have several people in the same room. There will be, I think with every option, there's also you'll get the video recording after and everything like that too. So um, feel free to shoot me a message or email if you have any questions on it, but I'm going to put that in the, um, the box or the chat box here now. Thank you, uh, Peyton. You put the link in there. Um, do you, <clears throat> can you give us your contact information that you would like to share with the group or, and do it if you can verbally and put it in the chat? Yes. <laughs> yep. I'll put it in the chat too, but, um, my information. So Peyton Gillis, it's there on my name. Um, the email is P Gillis at tgpfirm.com so tax game plan tgpfirm.com um i'll give you my cell 314-250-8685 that way you can get a hold of us or or text me if you need the business line is 636-339-5998 um and then our website's tgpfirm.com i'll put that all in the, the details here too okay thank you and, and what is the cost on that so it ranges. So basic cost, it's ranging from 229 to 299. But currently there's that the code that I'm going to drop in there for 10% off as well. Um, so that it'll at least go through the weekend and the tax free weekend and everything with Missouri um, that you'll have access to that code. So probably till at least mid to late next week, we'll leave that code up and active. Okay, thank you.
And you are actively taking new clients on. Is that, that is correct? Yes, we are. Yeah. So actively and, and good clients for us, just to give you a good feel on that. Um, any good client, business owner, real estate professional or investor, usually somewhat of successful making, you know, six to eight figures on that, just so we can do kind of full tax planning and they can take, what we don't do is kind of the once a year tax prep only. So anyone that works with us, we're going to meet with, they're going to be able to call and email us anytime they want. Um, we're going to have a little bit more on them. We're going to talk to them about if we're doing the, you know, any different strategies for investors, if we're doing cost segs, we're going to be hand holding them on that. If we're hiring kids and doing stuff like that, we're, we're definitely much more of a hands-on approach to that. Um, so that's a good fit for us. Uh, the reason that this is, we were started putting on this seminar and wanted to do this one is we've been getting a lot of calls. And while, while this can work for anyone, even our ideal client, we get a lot of calls from early investors or realtors and people that aren't yet our ideal client. They aren't quite to that success level, but they could definitely benefit from getting all this information and taking it back to their own CPA or financial professionals and allowing them, you know, just being like, hey, he brought up this strategy or there's this strategy, knowing how, when to use it or bring it to them so that they can assist them with it as well. Okay. Thank you, Peyton. Appreciate that. Yes, thank you. Can I, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, do Does your firm do QuickBooks bookkeeping type work? We do. Yeah, we do. So we, we do monthly bookkeeping. Um, we do basically any compliance. The only, I mean, we're a full service. The only service that we typically are, or similar services that we will often outsource is going to be audit, a full audit. Um, we don't have an auditor on staff. Anything below that, as far as a review, a compilation, we will do. But if it comes to a full audit for a business, we'll usually refer that out. And also, um, we'll typically refer out like valuation services. So if you need an actual valuation to sell your business or to do something, we can run the quick numbers for clients, uh, but we do not have a certified valuation specialist on staff. So by the time they're you're doing it with a third party or someone, unless it's just like a father to son sale, um, if it's a divorce or something like that, then you're tip, we're typically going to refer those valuation services out as well. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm needing to find somebody that can do a one-time QuickBooks uh, review of my QuickBooks. Um, not an ongoing daily basis, but rather go through the last three years of my QuickBooks and get them all fixed up because my accountant in 2020 went off the deep end, uh, okay. left, uh, didn't sell his company, didn't sell us to anybody, didn't answer the phone and just like disappeared. Um, and so I'm not comfortable with what happened, you know, with my QuickBooks in 2020. And then I'm not real comfortable what happened after that because he wasn't yeah. doing them anymore. So I need somebody and kind of look at doing a one. And reach, QuickBooks. Dave, reach out to me um, from what you're telling me on that. That may be a good, um, we might, re we might talk to you, but I could at least put you in context. I mean, we also have third party bookkeepers that we've outsourced to in the past. This might be a better project for one of them but at least I could put you in touch with, you know, one of our ones that I know well and that we've used in the past. Um, our, you know, bookkeeping for us probably comes up better for clients and stuff like that, but just reach out. And if it makes sense, we can either talk about doing it or we can put you in contact with, hey, here's a, a good bookkeeper who can get you all cleaned up and everything like that or talk with them too. Okay, perfect, perfect. Thank you. I'll put my... Put my contact info in the chat box. Okay, I'll grab that. Okay, right, thank, well, thank you. Thank you guys yeah. for letting me pitch that. Just let me know if you have any qu other questions or reach out to me. I'm putting my contact info in there now. Yeah, thank you, Peyton. Yeah, if you, and if you could just go ahead and put that information in the chat, just so we have that, that's great too. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, uh, Carrie, for inviting Peyton, too. That's always very helpful. You're always so good at sharing uh, sharing others with us. We appreciate that very much. And would you like to say anything about your service while we're here today, Carrie? 
I mean, there's something. Absolutely. Sure. People. That'd be great. It's been a minute since I've been on. I, I, to everyone, I broke my leg and I've just been um, dealing with that. So that's why you hadn't seen me for a while, but I'm getting, I'm on the road to recovery. So everything is going well. Um, I'm Carrie Curley. I'm with New Frontier Bank. I'm a commercial lender dealing with small to medium sized businesses. We work with investors, um, commercial, residential, short term rentals, that type of thing, um, lines of credit, different working capital options. If anyone needs anything, please reach out to me. My number is 636-940-8740. Again, I'm with New Frontier Bank. Thank you, John. Before you, before you let her off the hook, how'd you break your leg? Everybody's wanting to know. Oh, gosh. Well, you know, I wish you could say it was a, it was an extraordinary story, but unfortunately we have a, or had a 14 year old golden retriever um, that wasn't doing very well. And it was a Saturday and we were going to take him to the vet that Monday. And I'm sitting on my deck watching TV on a Saturday evening, just enjoying life. And I heard him down there kind of crying and I thought he, you know, he never does that. So I ran down the steps and before I ended the step, I skipped one and I ended on the patio on my knee, which broke my femur bone. So I was in the hospital for four days and had surgery. So yeah, no, not a fun story at all. Thanks, Dwayne. I appreciate you calling me out like that. <laughs> well, it's good to see you, Carrie, and we appreciate you being here and we're glad you're on your way to recovery because at least Thank you're you. smiling today. So yes. Thanks, yes. John. Thank you very much. And if you don't mind putting your contact information in the chat too for anybody that might want to write, write down. Thank you. I'm just glad it was Dwayne that asked and it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it looks like we had inquiring minds. <laughs> <laughs> Laura would have done it behind the scenes, I think. She, she's good at, at investigative <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Hey, let's see we had a, did have a question here kathy mentioned joining a society for ethical landlords anybody have a link for that um no i don't i don't really does anybody else know anything about that i know you're at the right place for the ethical landlords i know we have more good good apples than bad apples that attend here but we do have to do the disclaimer just because you never know but uh yeah rachel i don't i don't know uh if anybody else would like to share information feel free to do so I wonder if we could contact Kathy and maybe get get back and announce it maybe next Friday. She'll yeah she'll be she'll be uh, reaching out. I know she sent me an email this morning and she kind of touched on that. There are a lot of things that that are going on and we could we could definitely uh, ask her about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Amber said something about the a that's the uh, ADUs. Well, the accessory dwelling units, I think, is what those are. Um, I know the LA group, uh, RIA group, did a presentation on that a couple weeks ago, but it wasn't one on virtually because I was going to watch that. It is, they did do it. I mean, they only did it in person. They did not do it online. So uh, I don't really know much about it. I, I know it's been in the news lately. Amber, if you'd like to, uh, you can unmute if you'd like to say anything more about it. Or does anybody know anything about that that they'd like to share with us? Hey, this is Rachel. I'm actually based in LA and part of the LA RIA and mm -hmm. have an ADU at my primary residence. So I'll put my chat info or my email info in the chat and feel free to reach out or I can answer any questions you might have here as well, if that's appropriate. Sure. Would you like to talk about it a little bit, Rachel? Do you? Yeah, well, I mean, most of what I, the information I have will be specific to California um, and especially to the LA area where we have some fun thanks to earthquakes in a slow city with uh, getting permits around that. But, you know, definitely there's been a big push in the state of California to um, loosen up some of the restrictions around ADUs or guest houses. And, you know, it's kind of a twofold approach that's been taking place. One is, um, you know, the, the government's been sort of fast tracking permitting around ADUs and, and really working with owners of uh, properties to try to get more housing available. Guest, guest houses or ADUs are, are an excellent way of doing that. Um, and then the second, you know, the second thing that's taken place here in the city is, you know, there's a lot of people that have, uh, I would call them, uh, you know, non-conforming ADUs or guest houses. And, you know, there's been sort of a grace period where the, the city at least is saying, hey, you know, if you fess up about that and work with us, we can 
we can make that current for you. And of course, they're going to benefit with the taxes, the additional taxes that they're going to garner from that as well. That's sort of a general overview of what's happening here. I don't know if there are any specific questions I can answer for you. That's great. Thank you, Rachel. Um, Amber, do you have any specific questions? I know you're in St. Louis area and you were asking about those because I know, yeah, yeah, you said they just uh, approved a new law here for them. Um, that's exciting to hear. Unfortunately, I'm just getting started in St. Louis. Got three properties going there right now and haven't plopped an ADU on them just yet, but that's that's cool. I'll read into that myself. Well, that's great. We welcome you here, um, Rachel. And um, I don't know if you plan on moving here, but LA is an interesting town right now. I do know a lot of people out there and um, it's different than it was a few years ago. I, I know that. <laughs> that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Hey, what is an a ADU, John? It's well, the definition, uh, I'm not sure what the actual definition is, but it's an uh, accessory dwelling unit is what the initials stand for. That's right. And, you know, I guess uh, my dumbed down definition would be it's, you know, it's a way of making another property available on your current property, right? So if you have a primary home and maybe you have a garage in the back and you want to convert the garage to an accessory dwelling unit, you know, maybe a one bedroom or a studio. And then it's a means of providing affordable housing for folks out there that maybe, you know, they can't find if they can't find a one bedroom at their price point. Right. So especially here in L.A., anything that apartment developers are putting up, they have to do it at the luxury level. So the pricing between that and an accessory dwelling unit or guest house that somebody can put up in their backyard you know, there can be a little bit of a savings there for somebody that's looking for that. Definitely an interesting subject because we do have a lot of properties I know uh, in the St. Louis area and, and around that already have existing garages and probably wouldn't take too much to, to make them into a uh, very livable dwelling. So that'll be interesting to see how this, this all progresses. So maybe you can keep us uh, informed, Rachel, now that you're uh, now that you have a by city relationship with real estate here. <laughs> yeah, it sounds good. And I guess the other thing I'll add is, you know, there are some folks that have looked into manufactured ADUs. So there are like tiny homes that you can actually uh, plop down on the property if you don't have a garage that's easy to convert. And uh, you can guess, you know, something that's prefab is going to be a lot easier to to fast track through with the city, um, you'd want to probably look at if there's anybody local in Missouri as the you know, expenses of transporting something like that would be quite, you know, quite steep. But here in California, there's some folks that are making, they're making prefab ADUs or guest houses. And definitely, you know, if the property, if it seems like a good fit for it, it's definitely a way of fast tracking that whole process. But yeah, I'll, I'm happy to to keep you informed and I'll probably do some Googling myself and read about the new law that passed there. Thanks for mentioning that. Hey, Rachel, are you in St. Louis? I am not. I'm in LA. I've got some okay. properties though in St. Louis. So just closed okay. on one and got two others that are, uh, we're just finishing up some of the, I think the sewer permit on those and then we're going to rent them out as well. I, I find that interesting because I talked to the head of the, the new head of the, uh, uh, LRA here in St. Louis, and they got lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of properties and lots of vacant ones too. And he he said he was even considering that he's in favor of what he's heard about the tiny housing, and you can put, you know, four or six people and make a little community on a couple of blocks. So I thought, wow. And it's interesting that you brought that up that there's people building those now. So it might be an option. Somebody wants yeah, to yeah, little get tiny home communities, mm -hmm. and that's something that's. Uh... You know, we've seen people that have taken uh, trailer parks or some of the mobile home parks here. And, you know, we have a lot of people that are trying to break into the Hollywood industry, right? And their their income level is never really going to support them being able to buy uh, a home, but they're great candidates for renting out or a tiny home. So there are these little tiny home communities that are starting to pop up with lots of artists. It's kind of interesting and vibrant little community there. Yeah, well, that's what he he said. He was in, very interested in doing that. So if anybody wants to go do that, 
call him. Be a good deal. Make lots of money. Back to you, John. <laughs> Thank you. That's that's some good information. That's something definitely we're going to watch as it comes or you know be able to follow as it comes along. Um, I just wonder, uh, Rachel, do you know anything about like the container homes, like where they take the old trucks and make anything there? Have they done anything? I know in certain areas they hit, they won't allow it around here. But has LA ex, uh, explored any of that? Do you know? Yeah, I haven't seen that too much specifically in the city or the county of LA, but out in the desert. I see some of that taking place, right? Um, there are like uh, auctions online where you can get some pretty good deals on those containers. And I think, you know, I've seen some pretty interesting stuff that's been set up that way. I know I used to live in, in Northern California and I think the, our neighbor actually was able to buy one of those from an auction and convert it to uh, an ADU, if you will, on his property. So it's definitely viable and, you know, kind of a fun thing reminds me of like what people used to do with Quonset huts but on a smaller scale <laughs> yeah you say you buy them at auction i know around here i looked at them about a year ago for storage and you can buy them for about twenty five hundred dollars they're not very expensive and they are all metal i mean some of them don't look the greatest but you could always you know paint them or whatever and uh uh do, do you happen to know how much they they sell for auction out there just out of curiosity i don't but i'll uh put a link in the chat for one of the auction uh, sites that I was perusing when I came across them. Lots of Humvees too, if you're interested in buying a Hummer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, but maybe somebody is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. Thank you. Yeah, sure. And while you're doing this, Rachel, it'd be interesting to know how many of the neighbors want to complain about zoning and other issues that aren't even known for sure, just like they did with the, uh, uh, Airbnbs and stuff like that could be another battle that's going to have to happen. Yeah, with with ADUs, I haven't heard too much of a stink around that because a lot of people, what they're doing is taking an existing garage or structure and converting it. at our At our house, we bought it with the ADU already in place, and um, there's basically like a standalone garage, um, and the unit is uh, to the side of the garage, and then the the bedroom extends above it. So it really didn't change like much of the look and feel for the neighbors or the neighborhood. And, you know, as a result, I think, you know, there hasn't been too much complaint and everyone knows in LA, like the price of housing is so expensive here and there's just not enough housing for people. Right. So I think, you know, there's the city is not going to really uh, push back if somebody's interested in, in making more properties available or making more homes available on their property, I should say. Yeah, John, there's a, been a number of uh, videos, TV shows online for years and years about uh, semi-ADUs. You talked about the, uh, the, uh, the con shipping containers, and there's, there's lots of stuff about that where some guy in Arkansas put three or four together and, and made a house on it on a mountain. Uh, also, ADUs in Sacramento, I think I heard somebody, the uh, city council allowed uh, as somebody could take a like a one acre lot and put even four or five or six smaller shed like houses or accessory dwelling units if you want to call it that on one lot to provide more housing and of course uh, Lowe's I, I know I've seen that I'm, I'm assuming uh, Home Depot may have that option too. sell these sheds that are, are big sheds uh, one of them even has like a, a loft you or stairs upstairs so you can make an ADU out of a shed if you want to call it that too. And in St. Louis for years, they've had ADUs in the form of like those super big houses uh, north of like Forest Park have carriage houses and they convert those to uh, ADUs for somebody to rent out, which uh, usually, you know, there's the uh, old drive driveway or carriage holding holder uh, place down below, but then they have a, a loft or a half attic if you want to call it that up above and rent those out so there's a lot of that that's been going on before um yeah and usually those are cheaper and, and there's even the ones where like some people put uh live in rvs and and park them in their uh driveway uh and there's something else about a uh 
something like like a, a mini trailer like uh, 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 there's been a lot of TV shows about those where people will uh, put those on a lot. There was some lady who did that in U City or in the city and had a TV show uh, on that uh, half hour show or something like that years ago. So there's a lot of that going on. Obviously, people, some people can't afford, especially in LA, a million dollar house. So they buy a trailer and put it on a lot if they can find something like that. Uh, yeah, for what it's worth, there's lots of shows out there if they want to look, check on HGTV or some other uh, TV link, they can look up stuff like that. But I don't know how, how much those cost, usually a lot less. I think the lady who put a, uh, a small mobile home type thing in U City, if I'm correct, it, I think it cost her $27,000. So that's a lot less than a house. Thank you, Bruce. That brings up a good point too. Those sheds that was in the back of my mind because I know we bought one of those that uh, you see them all over, you know. And we bought one of those about twenty years ago, and I call it our wooden tent because it has a loft in it. It's like fourteen foot by ten foot, but they just delivered it and just set it up and leveled it. And, and um, I just wonder about some of those if you could put that on your property. I, I'm sure there's other things to consider as far as plumbing and electric and all that goes. But I just wonder about parking too. Was another. Uh, thought that I had. Um, I know if you could put a couple of those because some of our yards are big enough for that kind of stuff, but just would would you have the parking uh, also to go with that? So I, I know there's a lot of factors and like Dwayne said, there'll be a lot of things come out of this as a, I know as this develops. So it'd be very interesting and uh, see where this goes. But a uh, huge need for this kind of stuff though too, because a lot of the areas, not so much in our area in St. Louis, but a lot of the areas, they have outpriced herself out of the market. I mean, there's no way you could afford to live in so many places. I got a friend in Fresno and he had a car wash that burned um, last year. We had a mysterious fire, you know, anyway, but they're building, he's working with the state there and they're doing, uh, they decided to do housing because there is such a need. And I know Fresno's got a big, you know, a big uh, problem with homelessness and a lot of things there too. But he just sent me a blueprint the other day that we were looking at this, trying to figure out how it worked for multifamily though. And just out of a multifamily unit, it looks like it would, it would sleep four to six, or that's what it's for, a family of four to six. And it's only like 18 foot by like 12 foot which seems really small to me. But then again, I mean, it had everything you need. I don't know if it's conversion, because I know some of the stuff we've seen in the past with the tiny homes, I personally wouldn't like because you have to convert your table into the bed and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, that's a little bit more than I'd like to deal with every day. It's more like a camper. But some of those, I know, you know, they're, they're set up pretty well. So we'll just uh, be interesting to see where that goes. So I know that on some of the, um, in some of the cities, they have laws in place where you can't have uh, the building, like, so you have your home in the front and you want to build something like that in your backyard. You cannot have it exceed the height of your current home or what, whatever you have on your property. It can't exceed the height of the front part of it. So something to keep in mind there. Interesting. So I can't build a uh, high rise shed in my backyard in some of the places. <laughs> hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, it's <laughs> I thought so as well. I just wonder on some of the conversions, because I know we had, uh, you know, we've had Peter Hoffman in, in their group on a couple of times. But there, there's just in the city of St. Louis alone, um, just as of a couple of weeks ago, there's 22,000 vacant properties, a little bit over that. And 10,000 of them have uh, buildings of some type. Now, we looked at some and we're still working on, on you know, on bringing that more to the group for, in, you know, investment opportunities. But I just wonder on some of those, a lot of those are commercial buildings. I just wonder what the possibility would be uh, to convert some of that stuff to you know residential dwellings so um, I don't know thank you Melissa that's very helpful I'll just keep in mind that I won't build my shed or my my uh, ADU bigger than my my house <laughs> so. if I could say something on that also um, just because it's speculative it's new um, appraisals might be tough there's not going to be any comps for those. So if you're looking for financing for those, um, it might be a harder um, than you think just because they're not going to have a good value on them um, to, you know, for financing anyway. 
That's a great <laughs> point right there, Carrie, because uh, in fact, that brings up something else. It's not it's a little bit off the subject, but we're work, looking on some of those uh, properties in some of those neighborhoods in different places, like in the West End down there. They have that neighborhood they've developed. and It's one basically one, maybe two blocks, but one street. Um, and they're creating their own $480,000 homes. And now that one they just put on the market, which is not quite ready yet, is $680,000. Well, there, I, there's no comps there. And what they're saying is they're creating their own. But I'm just wondering on the financing on some of that stuff, because a block over, I mean, it looks, I would, I don't want to say dangerous, but not as desirable. How's that? Put it that way. But uh, what are they comparing it to? Only their block. And I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on on some of that kind of stuff as far as financing goes, because not all of us are going to pull out $680,000, even if we have it sitting there to buy one of these, what I call a speculative, you know, neighborhood. So what are your thoughts on that, Carrie? Yeah, that is the problem. And, um, you know, and I think people don't really think that just because, you know, um, all of these ideas are popping up and they're great ideas. Um, but when people, you know, appraisers go for comps, you have to have something to compare it to, or you're not going to have a true value. Lenders are having a real hard time. They're having a hard time with even, even as, um, you know, short-term rentals. I mean, we kind of have to look at those as long-term um, apartments in the event that we were to have to foreclose on that, um, that's probably how we would have to sell it. Um, so we have to kind of look at it like that. And the value has to be a little bit different, even though it's on a conservative measure, because short term rentals typically get far more um, revenue than, say, a lease for a year type of property, a long term rental. Um, it's just the, the different um, creative ways that people are are doing things and making money and living it's just um caused a problem for for lenders as well as appraisers Harry I'd like to chime in and tell anybody that's been paying their houses off like they could then they could use that as collateral to buy this new one and then she'll carry that you make all this money for two or three years and she'll be happy to load your money. That's absolutely right, Dwayne. You know, and people use different collateral for all of those things. Um, you could, you know, you can use like Dwayne said, you can use your personal residence to finance, you know, whatever it is that may be considered speculative at this point. Um, but it's really just based around um, the bank's risk and um, how they feel that they, in the event, that something was to go wrong, where would we turn to look to recoup um, our investment? So yeah, great, great point, Dwayne. You're welcome. Carrie, yep. I threw a question in the chat there, but I guess I'll, I'll ask here. Um, I don't know if you do DSCR loans, but I was wondering if the, the rent for an ADU counts on a DSCR loan. I know they look at the, the usually do like 70% of the rent right, or something like that. Right. And we, um, you know, we do debt service. That is our gauge and our um, cash flow um, gauge, if you will. Um, you know, right now, I am not real familiar with ADUs. I mean, I see the concept and I see that working. Um, you know, St. Louis and St. Charles County is bombarded by um, short term rentals. It seems like that's all everybody wants to do is, you know, rent a bedroom out of their house or do something like that. So if it's that kind of thing, um, you know, it, it because we don't do consumer lending. Um, it has to be investment. Um, it's kind of looked at as an income producing property. Then yes, you know, there's, you know, lenders do could consider it if it's that same type of, um, of uh, business model, you know, like a short term rental type situation. But I'm not, I'm, I'm interested to find out about ADUs. I honestly have not been approached by um, that term before. So that's interesting crazy how much it can differ from region to region out here. Correct. Yeah. My grandma would know what an ADU was out here, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're a little bit behind you, you know, we're stuck in Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you, I mean, you've got a lot more land and, and property out there, right? We're, you right. know, everybody, everybody's crowded in, in here. And, yeah, uh, you know, and it's a creative way. I get what you're saying. And like I said, I can see it yeah. being very lucrative in California. Um, it seems creative. It seems like, you know, if you just have a detached garage and, you know, one, it looks like there's a need for it. And two, if you can subsidize your income with that, then, you know, great. But I just haven't, you know, been asked to finance anything like that before. Yeah. And I think it's a concept that's really spreading and it's cool to see that something's passed in St. Louis. My mom retired up in Eugene, Oregon, and, you know, they, they've got a mix of they got a great city out there, but then they've got a, like a rural area 
and the homeless problem is, is there as well, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, they just passed a law there allowing people in those rural, on those rural parcels to start to look at putting up an ADU as well. And, you wow. know, that comes with some additional complications around septic tank and other, other areas that I think was kind of holding back the regulation. But I, I think, you know, I think we're starting to see more and more of that happen in places where it's clear that housing is, you know, affordable housing is in, in short supply. Isn't Eugene an area where you can just go out behind the trees? <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> just chop the trees down and make an ADU overnight, hopefully. There you go. <laughs> Very good conversation. We'll see where all this is going. Um, you never know what, where, where this is headed. Uh, it'd be interesting to see, um, I guess, get Kathy's perspective in a few weeks too, because I don't think she's familiar with that. But you know, that's gonna, that that'll be a thing that comes up too. Do you, like, like with eviction, do you just evict evict the person back in the granny shed, or do you have to evict the whole part? Is it somebody else they brought in, or, or you know, what what the uh, situation will be? So it'll be very interesting to see where this is going. John, I think that's an easy answer because they'll be on a lease and you'll evict, evict via that and that if, property that's identified. You don't evict yourself, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, well, it should be a separate lease for each each dwelling, I would I would assume, but it'd be interesting to see. So, all right, um, let's see. Anything else here? Um, let's see where we're at. Um, Okay. Um, looks like is it Deja Mayweather was asking about uh, real estate investor mentor programs. Yeah, there's a lot of good things out there. If um, I would just encourage you to to uh, tune in here every Friday for networking, but also go to stlreia.com and if you're not a member, go ahead and join our group. It's uh, probably one of the most inexpensive, best investment groups in the country. Still, we're still uh, one of the only nonprofits and it's still only $75 a year for two people. We have a lot of good things in the member section and we put a lot of good educational information in there. Um, you can go there right now and just get some free, free things and some uh, things to help you get started. But uh, <clears throat> yes, before you spend a lot of money, I would just research some stuff. Um, there's nothing wrong with spending money. I, I've probably spent as much, if not more than a lot of people on the call here as far as my education goes and a lot of it's well worth it you just have to see what's best for you though that's my only advice see what resonates with you so uh good question uh what else let's see here um tiffany put something in there for the home depot has a two bedroom one I'm guessing that's on the sheds there. Yeah, there's a lot of good ones out there. I know <clears throat> Laura and I look, we're building a barn aluminum right now, but we looked at some of those uh, shed type things because some of those are pretty big and some of them get to be pretty expensive, but they'll deliver them all set up on your property. There's some really nice, uh, some nice dwellings you can buy like that. So uh, yeah, that's a good thing to know. And um, uh, you, you do have to keep in mind that you have to put it on your own foundations. Uh, you know, whether that's uh, you build a basement or just have a slab, you do have to do that. And then the other thing was the um, the plumbing and the electricity. And then you are limited what they what they have. So that's one reason we decided to build our own. So, um, but there's just a lot of different things to consider on that. That's a great thing, though. Thank you for putting that link in there, Tiffany. Appreciate that. Um, let's see. Oh, did I miss anything else here? <clears throat> Amber says you heard of a granny flat. See, I think that's in the mother-in-law, uh, mother-in-law homes. Yeah, I, I know there are some homes we have around here that have the mother-in-law homes out back and, and on the side, I've looked at several of them and, um, you know, for, for rental properties over the years. And those, those are always good. I know it used to be a bigger thing than it is now. Now we have all these, what I, I consider pretty good assisted care facilities that have a lot of different um, levels of care. 
Um, so you can move in. I know I had clients back when I was in insurance, and this goes back many years, but they've gotten even better now. But you could move it in, in there just as a regular, uh, like a renter, where they'll just have some kind of care. But if you get to the point where you really do need some assisted living, custodial care or something like that, you can stay in your in your place, in your home there, your facility. And then they do have uh, even custodial care and different levels of care in there. So you don't have to leave necessarily. Uh, but yet, if you are able to get around and you're just... Um, you're looking for more social activities. They do have that also. And they do have a place where they'll serve you meals. And some of them are pretty decent meals in there too. So a lot of different things that we didn't have a few years ago. And then Rachel, you have some tiny homes. Thank you very much for putting that in there too. Tiny homes, very interesting subject here. So Anybody else have anything they'd like to share today? Uh, yeah, John, I do. Sure, Laura. Okay. Um, so I would like to announce that I have a hungry buyer uh, that's coming to me, and I just thought I would pass along what they're looking for in case anybody has anything. Um, we're looking for uh, rental property. Demand is high. They are hungry. Um, so they're looking for three bedroom rental properties in St. Louis County, um, built in 1950 or after. Looking for a max ARV on these of 250,000, and in C to B uh, grade residential neighborhoods, not in a flood zone. So I thought I would just mention that to this group uh, in case there's any you know wholesalers out here that have a deal on their hands or a or a hot lead, or if there's any you know owners here who have something they'd be willing to let go of, um, you know, something that's just not serving them anymore. Um, it could need work. It can be turnkey. Um, if you want to send me what you got, uh, my phone number is 636-587-0363. And my email address is my name, Laura, L-A-U-R-A dot C as in Catherine, dot Lennington, L-E-N, I-N-G-T-O-N at gmail.com. And I'll put that in the chat. So again, three bedroom or, or larger homes built 1950 or after C or B grade construction, um, not in a flood zone. Uh, oh, max ARV of 250,000. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm also, I, I'm also, that's for one particular buyer. I'm always looking for other types of deals as well. Um, I've got buyers for all kinds of things and I am an end buyer myself for certain things. I'm especially an end buyer for multifamily. Um, I'm, I'm got, I've, I've owned an 11 unit for a year now with a partner. Uh, we've gotten that thing. It appears to be completely stabilized and running very smooth. We have a lot of extra time on our hands in our multifamily business. So we definitely want to grow. Um, I'm looking for any of those leads that are off market. Um, I have access to on market leads, but if you own anything that maybe you're just, you know, ready to move on from, or you know of somebody uh, that's got, you know, a, a building or a set of buildings that they could sell, um, you know, I could do it either with bank financing, private lending, or I um, am, I have a strong history of buying seller financed and subject to and performing 100% of the time. So uh, there are just a lot of different ways that can help sellers depending on what their situation is and what their goals are. And keep me in mind for anything in that um, area as well. That's all I have for today. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. And yeah, please do put your uh, contact information. I see you got it right there quick. Um, yeah, and, and I would highly recommend Laura. She is a person of integrity. You can trust her. She's She knows a lot of people and very good to work with. She's a she's a pre person that actually brings value to your deal. I've seen her do that even times when uh, when somebody would walk away and other things went wrong, but Laura's always right there for you. So we Thanks, definitely appreciate, appreciate you, Laura. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you too. Thanks. Okay, good opportunities for people today. Uh, anybody else have anything they'd like to share? I know we're coming up on the hour here, uh, another minute or so. Uh, David Randolph, David, you have you have your one in uh, Priory Brook in Florida. Would you like to tell us about that? I see you put it in the chat, but uh, for anybody watching the replay. Yeah, for, for Laura, um, follow up to her request. Um, 5372 Priory Brook Lane, Florissant, Missouri. It's a house we're going to rehab. We've got it all completely demoed. 
Um, it's too far away from where we want to be. Um, it's uh, price is 119K. It's about 50K in rehab and about an ARV of 220. I hate to throw those numbers out because that all depends on your rehab and how well you sell the house. So you got to figure those numbers out. Three bed, two bath ranch, about 1,200 square foot. I think it's like 1188 or maybe it's 1210. Uh, full basement, uh, fenced in yard, one car garage. Our buyer backed out, pretty pissed about that, by the way. Had a contract on it and the buyer walked away. Uh, and that's a longer story. Uh, on that, but, um, you know, somebody didn't have a very good integrity with it. So it is, uh, you know, back up on the market. And so it'd be a great rental or a good flip, uh, Laura, either one that they want to do. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, David. Appreciate that. All yeah, right. Laura, I got your contact information too. I'm going to reach out. We've got a couple I'm invested in in Glasgow Village. It sounds like we'll meet your needs. So I'll uh, send you an email with the info. Okay, Rachel, thank you. Well, now that uh, we are talking about the city of Florissant, I guess I'll, I, I may have talked about this previously. If it's actually in the city of Florissant, um, they do have a pretty strict code, um, which is good and bad. Uh, it's good because it helps keep, uh, you know, the owner of the home accountable for keeping the home in tip top shape. So they will not allow uh, any repairs to the roof unless your shingles are an exact match. Um, and with that being said, if you have a, a homeowner's policy on that home, um, it's fairly easy to help get that situation remedied. So give me a call and I'll be happy to help you with that. You do need permits for almost everything there. They've really cracked down. Even uh, our neighbor across the street just got a new driveway and they are needing permits for that as well. So if you have any questions about Florissant, Hazelwood, anything in North County, as far as uh, any kind of codes, just, I'd be happy to help you. Even if you don't use me, I don't really care. I just have all this knowledge up here and need to share it. Thank you, Melissa. We appreciate that. And there are a lot of things you need to know. And I know you know you know some of that little, those little things that aren't little when you come comes down to it, because there's not, there's not a whole lot, there is a whole lot worse, but there's not a whole lot worse sometimes than getting your job shut down right in the middle of it. And I know many people that's happened to. Would you like to give us your contact information, uh, Melissa, as well as putting it in the chat and giving it to us uh, orally, if you would, please. Sure. I'm Melissa with One Way Roofing. My phone number is 314-504-1581. And uh, my email address is Melissa at onewayroof.com. That's M-E-L-I-S-S-A -S -S at onewayroof.com. Thank you. Appreciate that, Melissa. Okay. Anybody else have anything today? Just a couple minutes over. A lot of good conversations, though. A lot of good information. Um, appreciate everybody tuning in. We appreciate Kathy too. We wish her well for her rest and relaxation. And what'd you say, Europe and then back in Kansas City? I don't know about the Kansas City part, how much fun that'll be. Although she has fun even on the panels, as we've seen last week. She's, uh, <laughs> I know she said she had to bite her tongue a couple of times, but you can see on her face her reactions to some of the things that, uh, and the craziness that goes on. Very informative, though, and I do encourage you when they do have the educational programs here in town that the city puts on for the tenant landlord educational program, they call it, well worthwhile. Bring your popcorn. Um, you get a lot of it, and they, they let everybody talk, too. You can actually get up there behind the microphone. In fact, they had more people uh, that wanted to talk than they had time for, and I know that one, uh, Dwayne mentioned that one gal that kept talking, and they, uh, the judge did a very good job as a moderator getting her to go out in the hall and clearing the hall out, so uh, I don't know where the next one will be. If it's down there, I would encourage you, though, uh, 
maybe you could go there before a ball game. A couple of people did that, which I thought was pretty interesting. Maybe you could, it's close enough to walk. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, watch your, watch your emails for updates. Um, always, you can always go to stlreia.com. Um, you can always reach out uh, anytime to us and we will be here next Friday as we are every Friday. So thank you, everybody. See you next week. Thanks.